DCP Bailey says the public needs to be aware of the realities on the ground for members of the JCF. I think the public need to understand what we are up against in terms of the type of gangs that we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And we need their support. Our, our, our officers are constantly exposed to danger, which is the nature of our job. But when you, a gangster, can look at an officer and blatantly said to the individual, we are going to run a program on you. Mm -hmm. Jamaican people know what that means. DCP Bailey, along with Director of Public Prosecutions Paula Llewellyn, revealed that a number of police personnel linked to the Uchens case were targeted prior to the case submission. A relative of one of the constabulary members was killed. Four of my officers were attacked in a coordinated uh, effort recently. On the weekend and before the judge commenced the weekend, information, exactly. three officers in the case okay. were four. attacked it's actually the four. weekend. One of four. Four. The weekend. That's the coordinated before. attacks we heard about prior yes. to the delivery but of the we judgment. Couldn't say anything. Got you. Yeah. We couldn't say anything. And one officer, his father, was killed. Mm -hmm. at the they are alluding to incidents which happened in late September. At the time, the police high command put members of the force on high alert and launched a probe into what was described as coordinated attacks by criminal elements. DCP Bailey says he's still not at liberty to discuss the matter publicly. We are not, I'm not going to comment, but what I will say to the public, the persons who are responsible, they will be brought to justice, and we are committed to that. Initially, 25 persons were charged and brought before the court for being members of the Uchens Wilson gang. At the end of the trial, 13 of the accused had the charges related to being a member of the gang dismissed, an outcome DCP Bailey caused bittersweet. However, DPP Llewellyn says several other issues were happening behind the scene as it relates to the trial that neither the judiciary or public were aware of. We have to walk a fine line in terms of security issues in the trenches. Security issues that you in the media, members of the public, and certainly the judiciary could never be aware of. And if during the course of the case, if you have this big gap between when the evidence is taken and summation, things may be happening that we cannot, and even during the case, we cannot air in court I so appreciate it the so I just want you to get an idea that this was a very complex matter you had a lot of issues the first the prosecutors too tried to give guidance and there were many late night long long hours in terms of consultation Wayne Walker for Nationwide News good day my wonderful people it's me again the great countryman remember to like share and subscribe. Yo, I've been doing some research into the U Chance Wilson Gap. And this baby fierce, nerd looking young man was a very dangerous hungry. He had a gang network. The prosecution said 26, but it seems like it's more than that. Yo, this guy had the police them and the prosecutor on their P's and Q's. Them steal over four hundred million dollar. He had the pawn shop. People them working with him. And one of the informers, who, one of the friends who turned informers on him, testified that Sir Juan Jermaine Stewart, he used to pawn the thing for them. But guess what? When they went to the pawn shop, all the information disappeared. And coincidentally, it just disappeared. That's how brilliant this young man was. This guy was targeting law enforcement. As you heard from the clip. This dude looked like he was a university student. You chance. But I asked him in You chance Wilson. <laughs> so like something 
Ultra Cowboy movie. Mm. But follow the equation, I have to dig a little bit deeper into this young man. And I have another thing. So follow me. Now, this guy is a sophisticated criminal. He had a very sophisticated operation where he had police working for him. He had women. He had gangsters. And he was terrorizing the neighborhood and the different parishes. No, I thought he was brilliant. But he is not. Because he was doing his thing. And then they went and shoot after the police. Because now I guess he started getting big headed and started targeting the police. But after I'm shoot after the police, the police shoot him and then he went to Kingston Public Hospital. And he did the oldest trick in the book. Anybody guess it, I'll give them a hundred dollars. Actually, I'm gonna tell you what he did. He gave a false name. He didn't even have a false ID. He gave a false name. Now, the police have been watching these guys and I think they use the, uh, the anti-terrorism, the sea talk to bring these guys down. But now I'm starting to think maybe they didn't do such a good job because it's only what, eight people out of 25 that got arrested that mean that got sentenced, sorry. And the other people then were set free. The dynamics is really crazy. Uh, follow me. No, I might have to take that back again. <laughs> but this guy must be a project manager. They said the police said that these guys were structured. He structured everybody with their specific role and their specific task. So he was running this like a multi-million dollar business. That's how he was running and doing his thing. So basically, what they do, they would friend people and then send in a next man to come around you, the oldest trick in the book. But I guess what made these guys so cold, the, the gang members were robbing affiliates. So if they knew countrymen, they would friend countrymen and then send a man come rob me. And it seemed like they were robbing people that they knew very well. And it was pretty much structured, uh, timing, and how not to get detected. And that's what they were doing as we move on. So now when they do the robbery, they would do like a small injury to the man who set it up. So the man set it up, he would have did it too. I get all the licking I made a gun butt. And then make it look like, yeah, him get robbed too. And he was a part of that. Very structured, very detailed down to every last bit. To be honest, this gang is one of the biggest thieving gang that ever came out of Jamaica. They would steal anything that was in their part. They stole two buses, sold it for 30 million. They were like a hurricane. I didn't know that Eugene Wilson gang was this ferocious. They were like a bunch of piranhas. 
And like I said, the prosecutor and the police did a good job, but they also did a bad job. Because they should have nailed all of them to the cross, and they didn't. But I guess the mastermind is cooling off his heel in a Jamaican prison. So, I guess that kind of break it up a little bit. But I feel this gang is not finished. You know what I'm saying? And I think there's more to come with the Wilson gang, the Uchen's Wilson gang. This guy should be in university studying, getting his master's degree, but he's out here doing this. Another story about these Jamaican youngsters. And it ties into the cowboy thing and the Ethan Green, and I don't mean to keep on bringing it up. But people inform on them and them not even know. It's like they don't care after them reach to a certain level because once you start to do certain thing and, and your brain get that dopamine there, that's it. It could be anything you're doing. Robbery, money, you're making money, yeah. And they feed off that like vampires. So that's how I feel about this dude. My name is Countryman. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And I must commend the police on getting rid of this gang. It was their first test case, like what politics what said. But they made a lot of holes also. So I guess as they move forward, they can fix that. Countryman out, like, share, subscribe. Now, I'm going to set up a new membership for people who want to join the premium membership where you can get the exclusive videos that I can't really put on YouTube. So let me know what you think about that. Countryman, and I'm out, and I'm going to keep the fire burning. Peace.